What is science? Science, in its simplest definition, is to study. Often, areas of study are identified by the Greek suffix logi, from the Greek word logia, meaning study, speak, or lecture. Science is burdened with the task of observing the world and universe and arriving at unbiased conclusions. More applicable to the question, should Christians study science, is, what is science not? Some Christians perceive science as man's attempt to explain the universe without God, viewing science as anti-God. While this is a very small minority of Christians, they are very vocal and very noticeable to the non-Christian community. It is important for Christians to understand the distinction between a non-God or secular answer and an anti-God answer. Simply because the scientific process and conclusions are largely secular, this does not mean the scientific process and conclusions are anti-God. A good analogy would be auto maintenance. If one were to notice a strange sound coming from their car, they would likely investigate the sound. They would search the car for abnormalities. They will develop theories and conclusions regarding the strange sound. It is very unlikely one will consider God as the cause of the strange sound. More likely, one will arrive at a secular conclusion regarding the noise. This conclusion and the process of arriving at the conclusion are not anti-God. They are only non-God. While they do not consider God as a potential cause, they do not dismiss the existence of God or even the likelihood God allowed the problem to occur with a specific purpose. Conflicts between Christians and Scientists Unfortunately, members of the Christian community have positioned themselves against the scientific community. For centuries, these Christians have felt a sense of animosity towards the scientific process. Arguably, this conflict first arose when Galileo discovered the Earth was not the center of the solar system. Prior to this discovery, it was the general consensus among the scientific community that the Earth was in the center of the solar system, called the geocentric solar system. Christians, in an attempt to demonstrate the divine inspiration of scripture, identified passages confirming this geocentric theory. Their voices go out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which, like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. Psalm 19, 4 through 6. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. First Chronicles 16, 30. When the scientific community changed its opinion regarding the position of the earth within the solar system, the church appeared incorrect. More specifically, the scripture they cited to defend the geocentric solar system appeared incorrect. Unwilling to change their interpretation of such passages, the church maintained its opposition to the scientific discovery for a hundred years. These Christians made the fatal mistake of viewing their interpretation of scripture as infallible instead of the scripture itself. Today, the same problem persists. As science progresses, many Christians are unwilling to change their interpretation of certain passages. A common point of disagreement between certain Christians and the scientific community includes the existence of dinosaurs, the age and creation of the universe, and the evolution of species. Because their interpretation of scripture is in opposition to the common theories of science, these Christians and many non-Christians believe the Bible is incompatible with science. Is the Bible compatible with science? The mistake many Christians make is believing the Bible is a source of scientific information. In other words, the Bible not only tells us the why of the world around us, but also the how. This is absolutely untrue and not supported by the Bible. The Bible is only concerned with your salvation. The Bible only provides information applicable to your salvation. A good example of this would be the biblical topic of heaven. The Bible provides ample information regarding how to get to heaven. However, the Bible provides little information regarding what heaven is like once we get there. The reason is very simple. What heaven is like has no impact upon your salvation. This is not information that will help you get to heaven. All we need to know is heaven is eternal and paradisical. The same can be said of creation. The Bible gives us a very short account of the creation of the world. The only clear information we are given is God created the world. We are told why God created the world. However, how exactly God created the world is not important as far as the Bible is concerned. This is not to say God does not reveal the how, only that this revelation is not appropriate for the Bible. The Bible tells us the world around us reveals the how. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Romans 1, 19-20 The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. Psalm 19, 1-2 Christians must study the Bible to better understand the why of the world around us. However, if we wish to know more about the how, we must look to the world around us. 
This is called dual revelation. Dual revelation. Dual revelation means God reveals himself in two ways, through the divine inspiration of the Bible and the divine creation of the world. As the author of both the Bible and the universe, it is only appropriate to believe God reveals himself through both outlets. If God inspired the Bible and created the universe, then the two must be absolutely compatible. One cannot conflict with the other in any way. It is reasonable to believe God wants man to discover him through his creation, as explained in Romans 1, 19 through 20. This means the revelations and discoveries of science are designed by God himself to reveal his majesty. Should Christians study science? Not only is it appropriate for Christians to study science, Christians have an obligation to study science. Science reveals the work of God and reveals God himself. By better understanding how God reveals himself through the world around us, we can better understand how God reveals himself through scripture. As Christians, we should not reject theories such as the Big Bang Theory simply because they conflict with our current interpretation of scripture. We have to remember that, while scripture is infallible, our interpretation of scripture is not necessarily infallible.